My name is Rob Booker, and I'm the Chief Market Strategist at Interbank FX, which is a currency dealer worldwide. And I uh, want to talk to you about support and resistance trading today. Uh, we need to get out of the way and uh, talk about the risk disclaimer first. Trading in the off-exchange retail foreign currency market is one of the riskiest forms of investment available in the financial market, suitable for sophisticated individuals and institutions. The possibility exists that you could sustain a substantial loss of funds and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. Nothing in this presentation is a recommendation to buy or sell currencies and interbank FX is not liable for any loss or damage, including without limitation any loss of profit which may arise directly or indirectly from the use of interbank FX or reliance on information. Um, I always say this to people, please do not be a psycho account killer um, when you trade. Please don't be a crazy psycho trader that leverages your entire account and loses your entire account on one move in the market. Um, time and time again, we see that uh, time and time again, we see that people lose their account because they trade a huge trade size and they can't withstand a loss. Please. Please consider, I see this over and over and over again. Please understand that if you can survive longer in the market, you can eventually learn to feel comfortable with a trading strategy and possibly become profitable, and possibly very much so. But please remember that most people damage their accounts irreparably because they cannot and will not reduce the size of their trades. They won't do it. They just want to make a ton of money and they get themselves wrapped up in a really bad situation. Please be careful. Please do not uh, take anything that I say to be some uh, recommendation to just go nuts and buy a huge amount of something. Okay, enough already with that mumbo jumbo. Let's, let's get on with looking at the chart. I want to show you, uh, first of all, something that we looked at yesterday. Here's the Euro Yen one hour chart. You know, uh, two days ago when we did this webinar, but the, uh, my internet connection wasn't working properly and the cat was all tied up. We looked at this Euro Yen one hour chart and we talked about the fact that in the absence of uh, two trend lines, that we have the possibility of using a trend line plus uh, Fibonacci retracement levels as profit target. So for instance, and this is exactly the chart that we looked at the other day, uh, we looked at the uh, blue trend line, which I call an entry line on the one hour chart. And we uh, said if it closes below that entry line, that would be, that would be a possible sell trade with a risk stop loss put at 142.20 and a profit target all the way down at the 100% retracement level. And that as we traded, we could sell it initially with a stop loss up here at 142.20 wait for it to fall down to the 38% ret retracement and then move our stop loss down to the 23% retracement level. If it fell to the 50% retracement level, then move our stop loss to the 38% level, which is what happened. But then it did fall much further. In fact, it fell all the way down to the 100% retracement. I want to talk about the fact here that um, when we discussed this trade, I mean, obviously you couldn't see all this stuff here. And I remember looking at this chart when this trade first opened the other day. I remember looking at this and, and thinking to myself, well, gosh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's really going to fall on the way down like we talked about. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I can't be sure that that's actually going to work. The reason that I still take these trades anyway is that I have a stop loss in place. And that stop loss represents a relatively insignificant amount of money in my account, a half a percent or a percent, if that stop loss is hit. So the, the danger of taking this trade really, really kind of falls away a bit. That of course it can go wrong. Of course my stop loss can get hit. You know, if, if the market gapped open for some reason, it, it, it's even possible that my stop loss isn't hit and I'm taken out at an even higher price. But because I didn't risk very much to take the trade in the first place, it removes a lot of the fear associated with getting in the trade, and I don't really worry about it too much. Now, that's not to say that I thought for sure that the euro yen was going down. Oftentimes, we mistake uh, a trade setup for an absolute sure thing. Uh, we had a plan to um, 
buy this pair actually if it went up and that plan never materialized because the pair didn't go up. Michael asks, are these trend lines sort of related to the 45 degree line Ron Schelling talked about at the last ITC in Barcelona, GAN type line? Okay, I have a huge amount of respect for Ron Schelling, really like him, snazzy dresser too. And uh, no, they're not related. Nope, they're not related at all. He's a good guy though. Don't, don't mistake me uh, for saying that I don't think that he's like awesome. Okay. Let's look at, uh, let's just take away these lines here. And let's say, for instance, well, what's the plan now? I mean, how do I look at a balanced view for a possible buy or a possible sell on the euro yen now, now that that trade is complete? Well, first of all, I'm going to draw a trend line across the top of the currency pair like so. That's a blue entry line, is what I call it. And in the DVD series that I did for FX Street together with Dave Murphy, we call this an entry line. And I always call it the same thing, and I always call it a blue. This is the line upon which the entry for my trade will be based. Now, first thing I'm going to say is, if the currency pair rises up and closes above that entry line, I'm going to think about buying the currency pair. Now, I'm going to think about buying the currency pair with an associated stop loss. Now, look where the stop loss is going to be. Let's do the math here for a moment. Let's zoom in here a bit and let's do the math. If this currency pair opens and closes above the trend line at 137.50, my stop loss is going to be 630 points away. Let's just let that sink in for a minute. 630 points away. I had better have an extraordinarily awesome profit target, or I'm not going to be interested in this. So let's do what we did just a moment ago, and let's use a Fib retracement level as a profit target. Okay. Um, <laughs> makes it kind of hard, doesn't it, folks? I mean, it's already retraced a bunch of the way. I mean, it's already gone most of the way here. So we've got two strikes against us on this, don't we? We've got the fact that None of our, our, most of our FIB levels are already used up as profit targets. And our stop loss is going to have to be absolutely ginormous. Is that really something that I want to get wrapped up in? Do I really want to be a part of something with a massive stop loss that has already completed 50% of its retracing? That looks like the kind of trade that just doesn't have the risk to reward ratio or the setup that I'm really looking for. Let's anticipate, though. Let's just suppose that I take it. Let's say that I take that trade at 137.50. My profit target is going to be 141.73, all the way up here at the 100% retracement. So that's really the next retracement level far away from where we're at. That's just the next one I'm going to. I'm just going to use that one for now because it's the furthest one away. Let's just be as generous as possible. 137.50. Well, that's about... If you do the math, folks, it's about 400 points away from where this currency pair would be when it opens the trade. We'd be talking about taking a 400 pip profit in exchange for the risk associated with a 600 point stop. That ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Not interested. Uh, Dejan asks, was that down spike this morning to 131 an error? The graphs I see that. But also my platform says the low is 133.40. Well, let me check another charting platform for you. Let's look at another platform here. Yeah, it'll just take me a moment. And I'll check it for you. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like today that, that would be on XIC that would be a bad spike. Yeah, so if you don't see that spike on your chart, then it doesn't look good. So that changes things. The low would be, let's just put it at 133. Dot, oh, let's just do it down here. 133.36. Let's do that. Because this line doesn't exist. It gives us a little bit more room, doesn't it? It puts our stop loss down at 133.03. That's a 450 pip stop in exchange for what is about a 400 pip gain. That risk to award ratio still doesn't work for me. I still can't. Uh, I still can't agree to it. 
still doesn't make sense to me. Let's look at a balanced view, though. It's not just the case that the euro yen, uh, my charting software blew up, but I'll bring it back. It's not the case that the euro yen can only go up, right? I mean, the euro yen can go down as well. So let's let's put together a put together a methodology here for looking at uh, sell trade as well. Let me know if you're able to see my euro yen chart because my charting program has just uh, collapsed for me. Uh, I guess you. I guess you are able to see my my chart. Okay, then let me uh, let me make sure. Yes, there we go. Okay, great. Thanks for your patience. Now remember, we're going to ignore this spike down here. We've decided that that's not a real price down here, so we're going to ignore that. Let's look at a balanced view here. I'm going to draw a trend line across the bottom here, for example. I'm going to draw a trend line across there, and that could be uh, my entry line. And it, of course, this is and this is the 15 minute euro yen chart, and this is already opening. Remember, I'm not recommending that this is going to be a profitable trade. All right, <laughs> I'm just telling you. This, okay, so you've got a uh, you've got a 15-minute chart that's doing going downwards right now, right through the entry line. It closes below that entry line. That does represent bearish movement. What could we do for a profit target? Well, generally, what I do for a profit target is I draw what I call a baseline. And a baseline is a a more gentle sloping level of support and resistance or trend line that the currency pair might meet up with if it falls through the entry line. So, for instance, we could say entry at 134.74, profit target about 70 pips lower at 133.98, and a stop loss up at 137.32. Once again, we're up against the fact that we have a massive stop loss, massive, like 300 points. You know, it's not 300, it's like 270 or whatever. And a profit target of, of like 70 points. I mean, that doesn't, ma that math doesn't work out. Yeah, the risk to reward ratio is totally upside down. Now, does that mean this trade wouldn't work? No, it doesn't mean this trade won't go to a profit. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that it can't go down to the baseline. What it means, however, though, is that the risk associated with trying to ride it down to the baseline is so great that you might consider walking away from the trade. And you can't simply, and this is what some people do, you can't simply say, well, I'll just put the stop loss right here and my risk to reward ratio works. Well, if you just make up where you put the stop loss in order to get yourself a good risk to reward ratio, you're not putting the stop loss where it needs to go in order to be protected. The stop loss isn't a level at which we just say, hey, well, that, that's a good risk to reward ratio. We're just going to put it there. I mean, if you do that, then you're essentially inviting the currency pair to stop you out, and then you're going to pat yourself on the back later on because you didn't lose very much. Well, that just doesn't make any sense, does it? So you got to, you, you, it's got to be a full package here. You, you can't, you, you can't just look at one element like um, what the potential profit is. You have to look at the full element. Now I know all of you know that. Rama asks, can you analyze the euro dollar and or the pound dollar? What are the next support levels, and how do you trade them on the daily and weekly chart? All right, well, um. I'm going to tell you straight out as we switch over to the uh, pound dollar. I don't, I don't know. And remember, the word no is very, 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 very. That's a strong thing for somebody to say to you, that they know where the next levels are. That's a very, very strong, strong wording. Those are them fighting words. So be careful if somebody tells you that they know where the next support levels are. Okay. Because I don't know where they are. I mean, as we all know, the market can do anything that it wants. Okay, you want to look at something on a daily chart. So let's look at the daily chart. Happy to do that for you, Rama, and I'm excited that you're here. On the daily charts, here are some things that I'm going to look at. Now, remember, I'm, I'm the kind of trader that I want to look at a balanced view. I want to see, I want to see what happens if it goes up. I want to see what happens if it goes down. I want to prepare myself for both instances. Uh, Mike asks, would I consider using older consolidation area? 
as my stop loss for support and resistance trade, or always the high low of the movement. I would consider using older consolidation areas as well, as long as a recent high low from the movement is not uh, is not higher or lower. Meaning, in this instance that we just looked at with the euro yen, Mike, I wouldn't use the previous consolidation area because it comes before an older consolidation area because it comes before 137. So I'd be putting my stop loss right in the middle of the recent move. Okay. Uh, Rana, back to you. Mike, great question. Good to, good to hear from you. Um, I'm going to start off just looking at a hopefully gently sloping Rama uh, trend line. It's blue right now, but um, there's some distance in between the blue line and where my currency pair recently was. So I'm going to color this green and I'm going to turn this into my baseline. This is my profit target line in the end. And what I do after that um, is I go down to, say, the four hour chart. There we go. Uh, I go to the four hour chart and I draw myself an entry line. This is what I call two trendy trading. This is the pound US four hour chart. I'll get to your question, G Mark, no problem. Just give me a moment on this other stuff. Ask questions anytime, folks. I'll get to them as I, as I go. Um, four hour chart, and we're looking at a, a possibility. Here's one scenario, not the only scenario. One scenario is uh, if the currency pair is able to break and close above the blue entry line, there's a possibility that it can get to the baseline. That's the green line. Let's say that that's about 500 and, that's about a 500 and, 600, 550 to 600 point move if it did that within the next, you know, two days. Stop loss down below here. And once again, goodness gracious, we're looking at like a 800 or 900 pip stop. It doesn't, this doesn't fit for me if I put my stop loss down there. Now, let's look at something alternative. What if the currency pair bottoms out in this 70-75 area and turns around and, and jumps upward? Well, Mike, in that case, I'll use a recent level of consolidation because that recent level of consolidation is a little bit higher. So it's very rare that I use an older consolidation area. It's very rare that I use that. It's more frequent that I'll use a recent area. And in this instance, that recent area could be just 200 or 300 pips below my entry. And that could be way better. That could be a much better risk to reward ratio and much, much worth, more worth talking about. Now, it doesn't mean I think that it's definitely and uh, going up or down, but I want to be balanced here. I want to be able to look at both sides of the equation. So let's dump off these, these levels. And I'm going to go down even further in time, like we did before, and I'm going to look at a bearish scenario for the pound dollar. That's a pretty good trend line right here. I guess you could call that even a sort of sloping head and shoulders. Yeah, Sue, the most recent area of consolidation. And Sue, it's nice to see you here again. Sorry that the charts and the audio didn't work the other day. Okay. In the instance of this falling through and closing below the trend line, we can think about what we're going to do. This is a balanced view. It's going to, we're going to look at both sides. I don't have a baseline, but I could draw, for instance, a Fibonacci retracement. Hmm. We're missing tons of our Fib levels, aren't we? It's already retraced a bunch. But let's look at it anyway. It closes below the trend line around, let's just say it closes at 70, 90. I'm just making that area. I don't know it's going to close below that level. 70, 90. Half man, it might even be 71, 50. Let's say that. 71, 50. Profit target would be 67, 46. Now that's like, that's like 400 points. We could put a stop loss. Because we have a recent area of consolidation or a recent turnaround, we could put our stop loss at 73, 71. And all of a sudden, we're looking at like a, 150 to 200 point stop. 
in exchange for a potential gain of like 400. Now that's the first, that's the first reasonable risk to reward ratio I've seen pretty much in this entire presentation so far. Why? Because we've seen such violent moves in the market recently that the recent highs and lows are really far away that we use as stop losses. So that's the pound dollar bullish and bearish view. Uh, G Mark asks, how's the, uh, the Booker band doing these days? Um, it depends on, uh, depends on if you use them to counter trend trade or trend trade. If you use them to trend trade, the Booker band has been doing quite well. If you use them to counter trend trade, this has been a difficult period. Uh, we get two or three really difficult periods um, each year with counter trend trading, just the way it is. Okay, um, I'm happy to take a recommendation or a request from anybody who wants to look at uh, any particular current chart. I'm going to look at the dollar CAD 60 minute chart, if you don't mind. Uh, four hour chart, actually. Here's the four hour dollar CAD. And as you can see, it's been really rising up pretty significantly. And we'll do this one, uh, and then we'll move on to one other that somebody wanted. Uh, Here's a trend line that goes across the bottom uh, on a dollar CAD. This is a four-hour chart. Go ahead and change this to uh, a baseline. We're going to use this as our, you know, profit target line, our base area. Uh, JP, I do not incorporate 800 simple moving average analysis with my support and resistance trading. That's a different set of things. You could you could send an email. Uh, to Dave at RobBooker.com or Ariel at RobBooker.com or Tiffany at RobBooker.com uh, and you could uh, ask them about the 800 simple moving average type stuff. This is particularly and very specifically um, just about support and resistance trading, simply. And I understand, JP, that you've got some questions possibly about that and uh, don't mean to put you off. Certainly can answer those questions and do analysis like that in a different uh, venue. Happy to do it, but this just isn't, unfortunately, the right place for that. Okay, so we've got our baseline, which is the dollar cab, folks, four-hour chart. So we're starting with the four-hour chart. We're going to go down to the one-hour chart. As you can see, my baseline is a little bit off here. There we go. This is the one-hour dollar cab. Let me make sure that I highlight that on this chart. All right. Here's what I would uh, consider in this chart. It closes below the blue entry line. It may, it may not ever be able to even close below the blue entry line. If it does close below the blue entry line, we have a possibility that it can move further down to the green baseline. Where does our stop go? It goes above this recent high right here. We have a fairly, fairly good risk to reward ratio. Good type stuff. Exactly what Mystic just said. Oh, hey, I know who that is. Hey, Chris. Good to see you here. Um, so we've got, I think, I think we've got a, um, I think we've got a pretty reasonable risk to reward ratio on this. But the, the dollar cab drives me absolutely insane. I don't know about you guys, but this currency pair from time to time just blows me away and drives me batty. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, folks. You know, this isn't necessarily the most cooperative currency pair on planet Earth. Let's look at the bullish scenario on this. Is there a bullish scenario on this? Of course, there's always, always a balanced view that you can take here. Go back to the four hour and see if we can find anything. Holy moly. No, that's not going to be it for us. What about a trend line across the top something? An entry line that looks like that. And we could put an entry line that looks like that. Our Fibonacci retracement is pretty much used up all the way, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty much over. So we're not, maybe we won't worry about that. Well, maybe, wait a minute here. Maybe we could do that. Let's see. Fib retracement. Um, I'm going to make these smaller. I know it makes it harder to read, but I just want to. Pull this up. You know, maybe if we do gain enough strength here in the dollar to close above the entry line, the blue entry line, maybe we try to ride it up to the to the 100% retracement level at 21.21, and then we move our stop to break even, and we try for the 123% extension, and or the 161% extension 
with a stop loss down here below uh, that old fib level and below the uh, 1770 area. That's not so bad. Actually, I'm I'm not so opposed to that. This currency pair, time and time again, will, will disappoint me. So I'm trying to be as uh, reasonable as possible. Although it's hopefully clear to you now that this is not my favorite currency pair. Okay, so that's the balanced bullish and bearish view on the dollar cash. Okay, we we uh December crude oil stopped this morning as well as gold. Okay. All right. Um, somebody asked about uh, Australian dollar, and someone asked about the dollar Swiss. Okay, so we did the Euro Yen NYC effect, so that one's over. And you're absolutely right, JP FX. The cat is totally more commodity driven. Well said. Um, which one do I want to do now? Dollar Swiss. You know what? Australian dollar looks good. Um, hey, bullish pig. Some of you guys have some really interesting names that you use. Okay. Uh, 240. Let's see if we can get a. Oh, gosh. Look at this thing. This thing has really fallen, hasn't it? Um, try to get ourselves a baseline. That is the most ridiculous baseline ever drawn. So I'm not going to draw that. I draw that one. This is the four hour Australian dollar US dollar chart. I really like to trade the uh, Euro dollar and pound yen. I like to trade uh, pound dollar, dollar Swiss. Pounds with those types of things. It's awfully moving higher. It's not moving higher right this second, that's for sure. Okay, here's the four hour. Let me let me make sure I tag this so you, for those of you watching later as an archive version. And welcome to all of you as well. Uh, okay, four hour Australian dollar chart. Let's go down to the one hour and see if we get an entry on. That's not so bad. It's very tight. You can see there's not much space between the entry line, the blue entry line, and the baseline. There's not a whole lot of space in there. So be careful. Um, be careful about that. I think I already did the pound dollar. Didn't I already? Didn't I already talk about the pound dollar? Hmm. Okay. Um, so there's the Australian dollar bullish scenario. There's not a whole lot of room in there. Um, let's go back to the four hour for a minute. I mean, maybe, maybe there is more room if we draw our, if we draw our baseline a little bit differently across the tops over here. But that, that doesn't work for me. That doesn't work. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. Uh, would you using a lower time frame, one hour and four hour? That's what I'm using right now. Um, yeah, that, that, that scenario is as good as I think we could get it right there, as far as I'm concerned, where we had our baseline right here on the four-hour chart, just like I drew for a few moments ago, and then our entry line on the one hour. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to look for me. Okay, I'm going to remove all those tools. That was the bullish scenario. Now, remember on the bullish scenario, too, I forgot to mention this. You know, you can on this bullish scenario, instead of using a baseline, you could do what I call a Grand Canyon trade. And you could just use fib retracement. Okay. Um, Rama says, do you take, first take a fundamental view on a given currency pair, and then do these technical analyses for entry and exit points plus a stop loss? What a great question. I, I'd like to, if you don't mind, Rama, in five minutes, I'd like to describe the relationship for me between fundamentals and technical. Where is the baseline analysis method coming from or based on what type of technical analysis? Well, it's coming from, JP, um, the book Technical Analysis of Stock Trends, which is by Edward and McGee. It's in its ninth edition now. It's the most famous book about support and resistance that has ever been written. Let me write this down. I'm not telling you that you have to buy this book. I'm just telling you what the name of the book is. 
And uh, that book, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends, is pretty much the Bible of support and resistance trading. It's just um, a big, fat, thousand-page book. And uh, when two traders on Wall Street argue about the validity of a trend line, that's the book they open. Edwards and McGee. Um, Michael asks, what determines your initial approach to a pair? Go for support and resistance or book or band or trend trade? Um, I have two different accounts. In one trading account, I trade support and resistance. And in the other trading account, I trade uh, counter trend trades using the book or band from the bottom of it. <laughs> Careful area. Guys are funny. Uh, we got to look at the bearish view of the Australian dollar. We got sidetracked. That is hilarious. Angelo, I'll get to your question too. All right, so here's the here's a theoretical bearish view, a downward view. Um, this is a bizarre trend line. If it closes below this trend line here, um, there's no more fib levels left, really. Um, these commodity pairs did the same thing, uh, just like a cat. Uh, I mean, we're so close to the 100% retracement that it doesn't leave us very much room. Folks, this is the Australian dollar, US dollar, one hour chart. Okay. Uh, so, as we just did with um, the dollar CAD, another commodity pair, we could, instead of only targeting um, the 100% retracement, you could, for example, enter on the close below the trend line, put your stop loss at 6,900, that, re that recent level of, of resistance, and then when it gets to the 100% retracement, move your stop loss to break even and try for more extension. That would be theoretically possible. Yeah, JP said, I'd like to use this method on the US dollar index. What's fascinating, um, Stan and Chris, that's Mystic and Stan H. You guys got to you guys got to get to know each other because um, it's fantastic. Um, let's talk about two things in the remaining time that we have, and I'm going to end in about five to seven minutes if that's okay with with Mod. Um, here we go. Number one, fundamental and technical analysis. Okay. Sometimes it is the case that I start with a fundamental view. Let's take, for instance, the commodity currency pairs, the dollar CAD, Australian dollar, US dollar. In the midst of a global economic slowdown, which we are probably entering um, globally, not just nationally, in the midst of a global economic slowdown, in that scenario, it is very possible that there is a reduced demand for commodities, such as oil and construction material. Less likely that the demand for food will go down, because there's just more people, right? People are coming around all the time. In the midst of a global economic slowdown that results in decreased demand for commodities, it is possibly the case that we are entering and um, we are in the midst of a fairly significant reduction in the GDP or the uh, economic stability, not economic stability, economic strength of those commodity-based currency economies like Canada, like Australia. And in those instances, I could have a long-term view, fundamentally, that those economies will suffer. I could have that view. And that view may carry me into a longer-term support and resistance trade. And I might use the support resistance lines as entry point to sort of play out my opinion about the world fundamentally. That is very rare for me to do. Generally speaking, I don't really think that I know much about um, exactly where something's going next. And I try to avoid the type of trading methodology that supposes that I know exactly where something is going because I really don't uh, know. Nobody really knows where, where all this is going. I mean, imagine, imagine for a moment that you did know where uh, everything was going. You'd still have to pick the right companies and currency pairs, and you'd still be up against millions of other traders that are making their own determination. OK. Uh, Angela says, do I let the dollar index influence my trading at all? Something about the dollar index, JP and Angela. 
if you find a place to trade the dollar index, and, and they know there are some things in the works for that at different places, the dollar index seems to be um, highly susceptible to support and resistance. But I want to just give a warning that it doesn't mean that it's not going to be just as risky as anything else that's possibly tradable. So uh, just be aware of that as well. Um, and remember that you know uh, nothing ever replaces your ability to manage your risk appropriately. That's what matters. Yeah, see, I love to use it as a reference too, JP. Um, that's what I like to use it for. I like to use the dollar index as a reference. And, and what, is, what does somebody mean when they say, they like to use it as a reference. So let's talk about it. Tonight. It doesn't mean that they use it to determine their trade. It means, and this is the dollar index, and this is the dollar index on a daily chart. Um, it means that I might use the dollar index to, to get an overall sense for what the world thinks about the dollar. I might get an overall sense. Now, it doesn't determine my trade to JP's trade necessarily. It doesn't make me go one direction or the other. But it does kind of interest me because I'm thinking to myself, well, what is the world, what is this basket of currency, the euro, the pound, the Canadian dollar, the Swedish krona, and some of those other currencies, what do the, how are those performing in mass against the dollar? And it's a bellwether. It, it, just, it, talk, it tells you a little bit maybe about the American economy. It tells you a little bit about all that. So let's look at the dollar index. Jack said that some experts said that horizontal lines are better than support and resistance lines, not trend lines. Is that true? Jack, what's true is what do you feel comfortable using? What does your experience show you? Remember, um, these lines don't know you. These lines don't care about you. And that expert that was talking, he doesn't know you personally. You know you. What works better for you? Um, before you take someone's opinion, think about your own opinion. What is your opinion and what's it based on? If you don't have an opinion yet, what do you need to do to develop an opinion about which one works better for you? Okay. Malcolm said, I've noticed that the British Bankers Association LIBOR rate greatly influences the majors lately. I can, I can see how that could be the case. G. Mark says, as a chief market strategist, what is your everyday work? I work with the public to um, help people understand that risking their entire account is a bad idea. That's number one. Number two, I study the economies of the world. Number three, I study the major currency pairs and some of the exotic currency pairs internally and publish reports internally at Interbank FX and externally for people like you, like we're doing right now. That kind of stuff. <laughs> Lines don't care about me. Okay, this is a dollar index daily chart. Let's go down to the four hour chart. Is there any correlation between euro, dollar, and oil? Wow. I don't know, but I'll certainly study it. There you go, folks. There's the there's a two trendy, there's this the four hour dollar index. And there it is. I mean it's been trending upwards, but there's your there's your trend line break. I mean if you could if you could buy it, you'd be buying it in a trend, and we've looked at that momentarily. You could sell it below this trend line to the stop loss up here at 84. You'd have a profit target way, way down there. Um, any other questions, comments, or jokes that anybody has? really appreciate the time that we've spent together today. Um, it's been enjoyable to be with you, and I'm grateful for your patience as uh, we had some internet connectivity problem last week. Uh, like two days ago that uh, are obviously now resolved. Um, any other questions or comments? What is the capital of Iceland? <laughs> About six dollars and fifty USD. That is pretty funny. Any hot tips for the next couple of days? That's funny. Never take a knife to a gunfight. When did we just watch something about that? That is bizarre that you just brought that up. Because I was just telling somebody that last night. That's hilarious. Perfect connection. Do I place a target exactly on the green line? Yes. As soon as it hits it. But that sound was my marching call alert. Oh, boy. You guys are funny. Do I wait for the four hour to close? Yes. Um, if I've drawn my uh, entry line on a one-hour chart and I wait for one hour, 
close. Joe, can you demo some of your failed trades? Um, I don't. I don't mind doing that. In fact, we could do a whole webinar at FX Street about things I've learned from my failed trades. Joe, I'd love to do that. That'd be fine. Um, Gmart, does this strategy, does this, as a chief market strategist, what is your everyday work? Gmart, I already answered you. <laughs> oh, you said oops. Okay. And Joe, I think it's possible we can all learn from some of those experiences. Yeah. Sure, Joe, I'm happy to do that. Um, do you have a perspective on the pound dollar for tomorrow? Do you have a position? I, I don't have a position right now on the pound dollar. And I, my perspective is uh, like I kind of talked about before. Um, I'm looking at a bullish scenario and a bearish scenario. If it breaks down below those lines, I'm bearish. If it breaks above them, then I'm more bullish. Does it work on a cross rate like euro pound? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It can be applied to those as well. Can you place your profit target, stop loss, and such diagonally? as really? What a great question. Yes. Yeah. You have to find out if you're comfortable with that. Oh, yeah, bullish pig. I, I don't mean that. Yeah, I, sorry. Um, can you place a profit target, stop loss, diagonally? Absolutely, yes. Yes. I uh, appreciate um, all the, the time that you guys spent here today with me. I know that you've got a lot of busy things to do. So, um, Someone asked how many times I back test before taking a trade in my live account. At, at least 500, but usually many, many more than that. So, many more than that. All right, Maude, are you around? I think I'm ready to shove off here. And... Uh, Hotcom is throwing a bunch of errors, so uh, it may collapse right now. So if, if I'm gone in a moment here, don't don't worry. It was great to spend time with you. Thanks everybody again. I really appreciate it.